what's good? Listen, let's talk about America Horror Story. Episode, uh, season 9, episode, uh, what the number of this episode? Five, five or six? I don't remember. Uh, Red On. Child. A hot mess. All right. In the beginning, we see beautiful, 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 uh, want to be reader. Um, if I remember right in the episode, her real name is D. Uh, She's uh outside, you know, waiting on somebody. See this dude, car pull up, dude, and got this chick going in the room. Now I'm thinking she pulling up on a nigga, trying to find like, oh, you cheating on me, bruh? Woo 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 woo. It ain't that, y'all. It's not that. Uh, she uh, you know, goes in. You know, sneaks in there, you know, used to call with the lock, the old school lock. That's old school shit. And, you know, goes in, you know, hear music, woo-woo, and hear the woman gasp or whatnot or something. You know, things like that, things of that nature. And so she goes to the room, and she pop, 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 pop. And she's like, I know you in here. Open this door. And then, you know, when she said to do nine, you ain't, you ain't expecting to be who we find out later on in the scene who it is. And so, she goes in there and... Child, she walk in. It's a woman uh, tied to the bed with her guts out, bitch. She goes and look and look around on right by the bed is a, a wall of pictures of trophies. Of all the bitches he done killed. You know, she go and try to uh uh put some on the uh on the womb. I'm like, lady, her 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 guts are outside and they like ain't no matter of applying pressure gonna say this woman. And so you know, next thing you know, see the dude come out like what you doing here? Like that. And so then when they started talking, I'm like so that's your mama's boyfriend? I'm like, oh girl, he gonna kill you. Then she bust out and said daddy. I like that's your daddy. Your daddy a serial killer. And the scene between them is sad, man. It's sad. Y'all excuse that. That's notifications coming in. But anyway. You know, and so um You know, he tells her that ain't no matter, you know, I'm evil. It's just in me. It was born in me and all this stuff. I had this pain in me and it only goes away when I'm motherfucking eviscerate a bitch. And, you know, she's like, no, no, this can't be. Uh uh-uh. uh. She said, you're just not born evil. It don't work like that. You know, she's like, it don't work like that. She said, Dad, I'm a psychologist. I can help you and all that stuff. And he had this butcher knife and I'm like, is he going to kill his daughter? But now he uh he do it to himself. I like yo. So that's why you so hell bent about serial killers because of your dad. You know you go to security and you try to find out everything you can know about why these serial killers just do what they do because of your father. And now, mind you, at the end of last episode, you remember she witnessed uh homeboy rise up, you know, Satan came and got his boy. Now, and she looking at him like, you know, she talking to him like, this can't be real, woo, 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 and all that. And, you know, he tells her, he said, you the same too. He said, that's evil in you, just like your father. He said, embrace your bloodline, embrace, you know, embrace your heritage, you know. And she's like, no, no, no. And she's like, I- I'm trying to help. I was trying to help. He said, for real? You don't want to let Mr. Jingles out. For real, you was trying to help. And then next thing you know, he leaves and they go to father. They go to father again. And uh, in that scene, I was like, yo, that's kind of messed up. That's messed up. So with her, her thing is this.
I gotta find somebody to kill me. I gotta find somebody to kill me. Kill me. Everything, cause I got atoned for what I did. You know what I'm saying? And like she like she too guilt ridden. And um get this running her ass. Now y'all my beautiful baby boy Xavier, he gone. He gone in man, y'all. The nigga gone. He cry, he cry, he cry. Now, I want to talk about one... Now, this ain't going to go in order. I want to talk about one scene that had me hollering. So, you know, Xavier, he wilds out when they at the scene where the car done blowed up. It's on fire and all. And he's talking about, I done got blessed, got touched by the uh, the heat of a thousand suns. I said, oh, Lord, this nigga crazy. And uh, so, uh, Chet... Was it Chet? Uh-uh. No, it wasn't Chet. It was a uh, homegirl. It was Brooke in Montana. They had to take uh, take uh, Zaya to one of the cabins. Like, this nigga need to rest. This boy, he gone. You know what I'm saying? And so, while they laid there and everything, you know, they were woo resting and all that stuff. Uh, you know, Brooke, she looking out the window and thinks she see right. And so she goes and see now Montana is trying to build up the nerve to kill this bitch. You get me? She had an accident and everything, just can't seem to do it. Now, while she's in there, she wake you know, he wakes up like, what's going on? You okay? Whatever. Here comes D. He could want to be real. And uh, she comes in and, you know, remember... Homegirl and Montana, they had fought in the woods. And so, you know, Montana, like, oh, hell no, bitch, you coming for round two? And then, uh, D just gone and uh, damn confessed that she the one let Jingles out. Zay, you said, what? He said, you ruined my chance at acting. He talking about he, he was going to uh, ruin his chance to be on TV Guide. He had a a, a, a bellhop two episode arc or something. He said, you don't ruin my chance for TV and film and everything. Now I'm only going to have a career in radio. Bitch! When he said that and started chasing uh, D all through the... That was it for the kid. I was up in here hollering. I was like, no, Xavier, what? Xavier said, now nah, my only chance of career is radio. Bruh, I was hollering my ass off, y'all. That mess was so fucking funny. So damn funny. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> nah. We see that uh, some of that mythology from the last couple of seasons do actually stand here. One of them is if you get knocked off here, you stay here. Now, we all good and damn well know that we saw Ray Head leave his body when he was on that motorbike trying to get the hell on. You know, he did that cowardly shit. So, Brooke sees Homeboy's ghost. You know, they run and everything. Now, mind you, Brooke been motherfucking... She been a virgin this whole while. And so... She thought, like... Okay, her fiancé was trash. Her fiancé was a bitch. Her fiancé was a... No, he was a... He was a punk. He was a punk. You mad at this girl because she's smart and everything. And for her to... What? to conform so he won't be mad and you know he was rallying everybody with him to not talk to her and all that stuff so you dim your own light fuck that nigga you know i hate shit like that and you know that stuff happens a whole lot you hear me a whole lot and then what heard was shocked me that you know you you were gonna marry this nigga Damn him. And so, 
her and Ray started talking, and next thing you know, they're getting booted. I was like, so we're going to get a, so Brooke going to be the a bearer of the Antichrist. The Antichrist coming again. I just thought it was just then. Okay, she going to get knocked up by, by Ray. Ray is black, she white, right? What happened in the last season? What was last in the last season? You remember uh uh them two them two young young Thundercats? What they do? They brought forth a uh, what? Yeah, the Antichrist. You know, a body, a vessel for the Antichrist, whatever. And he was a little biracial boy and all that stuff. So this what we doing? So that that kid from the last season gonna show up. Is it that we doing? Even though the timelines don't work. <laughs> listen, this is this is a miracle horse story. We we listen, you know how Ryan Murphy is. Timelines be looking like a hodgepodge of crap, a mess, and some kind of way it 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 it, it handles itself in the end. You know what I'm saying, girl, and then you a virgin, you probably didn't use protection and shit, you fucked a ghost. Now you hear you, you gonna be the mother of the Antichrist, girl. I was like, child. So they get up, put on clothes, and she goes, look in the refrigerator. There go his head. Ray's head. Ray come, Ray come up, and he finally sees that he's dead. Child, child, child. And so she screams and runs. And um, now Margaret wanted Chet to go with her. She said she saw some campers on the other side of the lake. And so she goes, you know, they in the uh, boat. And her crazy ass, she just having fun killing everybody. She go and kills poor Chet. Chet was a good one. He really was. Now she the one saying that Chet is gay. That she feeling her spirit. Well, I said, oh, so you got gator? So you got gator? And all. And, you know, she was feeling like, you know, and she was like, what the fuck is you talking about? Listen, it never crossed my mind that Chet was in the closet. It never did. I, it never did. So, I don't know what's her problem here. But maybe he is. Who knows? But still, and all. You know, you, bitch, you crazy. So, she kills his ass. Put him on the um, put an anchor on his leg and make him sink down to the bottom. Like I said, that's so fucked up. I like that's wrong as hell. Chet was scared in this hole full of spikes. Now he gonna be in that nasty pond, going water and choking that. I like my po my po boy, po Chet. So, okay, now, a good portion of this episode, uh, Brooke and Montana start fighting. Um, and they go, they got some good licks in, I ain't gonna lie, you know, homegirl basically letting on about her brother, you know, you kid, you a whore, woo, 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 and I'm like, bitch, uh, your results are unfounded, and then, you know, she let me know, she the one that sent the night slash of her wife. And all that stuff to kill her and everything. And so, listen, they are fighting through the whole camp yard while all kind of we got the we got Satan's little helper. He doing what it do. We got Mr. Jangles. Mr. Jangles done basically said, "Listen, I don't, I don't kill no more. Fuck it." And now D meet uh meet up with Jangles, and you know she's like, you know, kill me. You know, I'm the one that let you out like that. And, you know, Jingle's like, well, I didn't kill them people that, you know, it was basically you, your fault. Which is true. Kind of find out our boy, he wasn't, he wasn't no true killer, y'all. And it's sad. It, it just, his story is tragic as hell. It is. And, um, and, you know, he gets the bullets out of him and he said, you're going to have to live with that. You're going to have to live with that guilt. You ain't going to get off too easy. And so he goes... Back in the war zone, if you will, if you want to call it it. He meets up with Margaret, and I was like, kill this bitch. He had a hemmed up, choked up for a good little bit. I was like, kill this bitch. 
And I think she had that, yeah, she had that butcher knife on her and stuff like that. Did she stab him or cut him? Oh, Xavier got to it first. I think Xavier showed up. And Xavier had bow and arrow. Remember, Xavier crazy now. He crazy. And he started uh shooting um Mr. Jenkins full of full of motherfucking um arrows and stuff. And um and Xavier said, uh I played Robin Hood. What what you say? Some high school player or something mess like that. You know Xavier, he wants to be an actor so bad. Now he can only do radio. Sad, sad day. And you know, he kills jingles. He kills Jingles, and guess who kills him? Margaret, with that old trusted butcher dad. Now, here comes homeboy, Night Slash. He wakes Jingles up and look at him and said, Do you accept Lucifer as your Lord and Savior? And I like, Is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? Now, it seemed like his head nod or whatever, but they kind of steer away from it and everything. But he did. Uh, he did. He did accept it. And I was like, that's messed up. But all in all, <laughs> like I said before, his story is tragic. Now, Brooke and Montana, them hoes fighting everywhere. Everywhere. Boy, these hoes are knocking a few bucks. Now, mind you, here comes Dawn. It's in the morning. Remember, all oh, that mayhem and blood shit going on, right? You see a bus full of kids. They going to the camp. And, and, and you know, and like, I was, when this scene happened, I was like, God damn. Them kids pull up. There go, uh, there go, uh, Montana and Brooke, my, on the dirt, right, on the ground or whatever, Brooke finally got the upper hand. Brooke got that butcher knife and stabbed the hell out of her. I was like, yeah, you killed the bitch, but kind of bad, though, because you killed the front of the kids. And, and, and she stopped, her right, look, them kids look like... No, they whole innocence is gone. And them kids like, ah! I was like, good goddamn. I said, you should have never fucked right. You gonna know why? This what this why I say that, bitch. I was like, when he when she took when she gave away her virginity, I was like, dude, that's the only thing saving you. <laughs> I was like, that's the only thing that is saving you is your virginity. I was like. We know, okay, you know all the tropes with the horror movies, the slasher movies and everything, the final girl or whatnot. You know what they tends to be. They virgins and shit. So I was like, bitch. <laughs> Girl, if you'd have kept your virginity, you probably wouldn't have went to prison. And she could always claim crazy. So she probably gonna end up back at the uh 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 at the same crazy house that Jingles came from. Now, all them cop cars, ambulances, they show up, and everything. One person found Ray's head. Uh, they looking around, and oh, Margaret, that goddamn Margaret, bitch, with crazy pace. You hear me? Margaret stabs herself in the leg. Now, man, she the cleanest out of all of them. But she stands herself in the leg and starts to walk in. Here she go. And she's like, she tried to kill me. We we're, were talking about Brooke. I said, poor Brooke. I was like, God damn, Brooke. They gonna pay all the murders on her. Every last one. It's like the cycle happening over and over again. So, uh, you know, she could probably gonna get the, you know, the electric shock therapy, the drugs and stuff. Well, what's gonna, what's gonna, what's her name gonna be? Cause, you know, we got homeboy, Mr. Jangles and everything, cause the keys, what's hers? Little good, uh, Miss Good Girl or something. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? And so, here come Ray. Ray shows up, and the woman puts him in the ambulance, try to take it, she try to take a blood pressure, see that. And, you know, we all know he did. But I was thinking, I was like, okay, 
they in the ambulance. Let me see. Let me see if this gonna work. If this gonna work, if they're gonna pull it. And guess what? Right before as soon as the uh ambulance hit them hit that you know that little uh that gate or whatever and goes out, they go right. And the counselor from years ago said, uh, yeah, you stuck here, bruh. And Ray like Ray is like, I just wanna go home. I'm like, No, that's your home now, bruh. And so now all that was killed there will stay there. Montana, this is this is like this is a dream come true to her. She like, y'all, I feel have so much fun. She like, bitch, we gods here, bruh. You know? We gods here. We could do all kinds of fuckery. You know, and so somebody uh steals one of the cop cars. And while Billy Idol is playing, there goes our boy, Night Stalker. Night Stalker, Night Slasher. You know him. And guess who's in the passenger seat? Our boy, Mr. Jangles. And, you know, whole boy, tell Mr. Jangles, you know, put on the passenger your seat belt like that. And they chuckling and they riding off into the sunset going to Los Angeles to kill, 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 bitch. And that's it. That's it. It was a hot mess, y'all. So, so who only survived? Margaret and D. Did D, D survive? I think so. Yeah, Margaret and D. The only two survivors. Yep, them the only two survivors. So I can't wait to see what next week gonna be. So I think they're gonna do a time jump. They got to. Well, we're gonna do another fifteen years, and we'll see how that go. That's gonna be a hot mess. But yeah, listen, American Horror Story is a hot mess. I fucking love it though. It's one of my favorite shows, y'all. But yeah, that's it. Um. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll holler at you heathens. Later.